right, here we are. We're gonna look at standard three. Here's Pooh. Say hi to Pooh, everybody. Um, let's look at the causes of the American Revolution. All right, this standard is gonna measure your understanding of the main causes of why the Revolutionary War started. All right, the main thing you wanna think about first, though, is that the colonists believe that their rights as Englishmen were being violated. They were Englishmen, they were not colonists. There's no such thing as Americans. They thought their rights as Englishmen were being violated. So, this is how it's all going to begin. All right, here we go. All right, here we are. Our first cause, number one, number one, uno. Here we go. So, there's going to be this war. It's called the French and Indian War. We have the French and the Indians versus the British and the colonists. All right, so the British and the colonists are on the same side. Remember, we're looking at the causes of the American Revolutionary War. All right, it just happens that the way that this first war, the French and Indian War, which started in 1754, will lead to two friends, the British and the colonists, eventually being divided and fighting each other. So here we go. So the French and Indian War will end with what's a treaty is called the Treaty of Paris of 1754. 63. There will be another Treaty of Paris, the Treaty of Paris of 1783. We'll worry about that after the American Revolutionary War. All right, well, in this Treaty of Paris of 63, 1763, France was forced to turn over all of the control of Canada to Great Britain. No big deal, doesn't cause war, it just happened. France was also forced to surrender all lands east of the Mississippi River, except for New Orleans, to the British. Now, this is where it gets crazy. The British government began to control and was able to control all the colonies, all the American colonies. The colonists were used to controlling themselves. Now they get to get, be controlled by the British. So this caused great tension. All right, Parliament began to pass these laws to tax the colonists. Now, then to pay to keep soldiers in the colonies to protect them from the Indians. Now, just because the French and Indian War was over doesn't mean the Indians were happy about it. The Indians are going to continue to attack the colonists, but with the British soldiers there, they may not. All right, so tensions will increase even more. The King of England, he'll make a line that the colonists cannot pass. It's called the Proclamation Line of 1763. All right, here is this line right there. They're not, the colonists have to stay on this side in the 13 colonies and they cannot move west because of this proclamation line of 1763. Notice it's the same year as the Treaty of Paris of 1763. All right, that's cause number one. All right, bam, here we are. Cause number two is going to be like lightning. Bam, Ooh, I almost hit the camera. All right, anyways, what we're going to have is what's called the Children of Liberty. Now, you know when the kids get involved, things get crazy. First, we got what's called the Sons of Liberty. They are some colonists from Massachusetts, and they're going to go do things that's like, that y'all know about, stuff like, you know, the Boston Tea Party. You know, they go out, they dress up like Indians, they get on a boat, they dump millions of dollars in the Boston Harbor. They're going to freak some folks out, they're going to shut it down a little later, some freak goes out. But anyways, that's what they did. They also went out and damaged the property of the British. You know, it was kind of crazy. All right, next we have is the ladies, or excuse me, the Daughters of Liberty. Now these Daughters of Liberty, they were kind of crazy. What they would do is they would begin to think, how can they make an impact? They knew that we were buying finished products because of mercantilism. You know, mercantilism, 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 and ism. Mercantilism. They would buy all this, uh, this, this finished products from the English because of mercantilism, and we would give them money and then we would end up with these, these finished products like clothes. So the women would secretly, check this out, they would go and make clothes in protest, like little Pooh's vest here. You know, they would make clothes in protest, the Daughters of Liberty. And um, this would actually end up causing us not to rely on British imports like clothes. There you are, the Children of Liberty, cause number two. Let's look at some more uh, colonial resistance or things why um, the, the, these American colonists believe they were uh, losing their rights as Englishmen. But I thought they were Americans. Wait, hold on, there is no American yet. That's right. They're from England. They think of themselves as Englishmen. 
All right, so here's some examples of this. Before that, a little bam. Bam, all right. So first example of what's gonna tee them off is they were being taxed, but they couldn't represent themselves in Parliament to decide or vote on whether I want to be taxed or I don't. So no taxation without representation became the slogan of the time period. Taxation without representation, or they should say no taxation without representation. Get that thing you hit. All right. They were also, you know, they thought that when they committed a crime, they should have a trial by the jury of a, a peers, a friends of theirs, family, folks in the local area. Well, that wouldn't happen either. So that teed them off. Other things is these British soldiers that were, were staying in the Americas after the French Revolution, they were searching illegally without a warrant. That freaked them all out too. They're like, we're Englishmen. Darn it, you can't come in my house. You can't break in my car. All right, the last thing is, all these British troops, they were being fed and they were being housed in the colonists' house. They were in there taking my bedroom. You can't have my bed. It's called the quartering act. The British didn't like that. They wanted to be safe from that. There we go. All right, let's look at some particulars. This is gonna be kind of interesting, so I'm bringing out my abacus. Oh, well, maybe not. Okay, so, all right, what's happening is this. First, talk about this major cause, the Stamp Act, all right? This required the cause to print newspapers, legal documents, playing cards, etc. anything that had to do with paper, you know, divorce, marriage license, on papers bearing these special stamps. All right, so you buy the stamp, and wait, hold on, well, I never had to do this before. I'm a college, so what do you mean? I'm about to buy a, buy a, I put a symbol on a sheet of paper? That's what I write, there's these little symbols, kind of evil looking symbols, kind of creepy out yeah, a little bit, and put it on, on there. And basically what it was, all it is is a tax. They try to disguise it as, you must put a symbol on the paper, uh, we'll call it a stamp. No, it was a tax. A lot like what, like Obamacare. They're saying it's a uh, you know health care payment, but no, it's just a tax. Anyways, that's what uh, Congress said, or excuse me, the uh, the Supreme Court said. All right, next. So, so the Sons of Liberty, what they did is they they got together and they're like, hey, we got to stop this, and they tried to stop the distribution of paper because of the Stamp Act. All right, nine colonists they got together or excuse me, nine colonies got together. They sent representatives to a Stamp Act Congress. That means a Stamp Act meeting. They just got together and they basically sent a formal, a written statement to the king. Uh, I wonder if they had to have the stamp on that statement to the king. I don't know. Pooh, do you know? I don't know, but bam! All right, here we go. Let's continue this journey into revolution, American Revolution. This one's such a big thing, I brought out my elephant. Big thing, you know, uh, maybe not, okay. Uh, but we do still have the lightning, bam! Okay, so now we have what's called the Intolerable Acts. Now, the King of England did not call them the Intolerable Acts. The colonists called them the Intolerable Acts because they couldn't tolerate it, they couldn't stand it. So, oh my gosh! These acts are intolerable. All right, this is what happens. The Boston Tea Party took place, and then they shut the Boston Harbor down. No more boats in and out. They caused many people to lose their businesses. They lost money. They just lost all types of merchandise. Nothing could come in and out of Boston. So Boston begins to go into depression or a recession. Things are bad. Paul Revere's there. Means a protest. All right, next thing is this. Part of the intolerable acts is, all right, any British official accused of a major crime, guess what? He got to get on a boat, leave the colonies, let's say he, uh, he, he murdered somebody or he raped somebody. He got to get on a boat, then float out of the colonies and go on over to England and have his trial in England with his buddies, with his peers, not where he actually committed the crime. That is intolerable! All right, next. What is going to happen is that the British troops are going to be forced to live, or excuse me, they're going to, we're, we're, we're going to have to like, like let them li live in our house. Oh my gosh, I can't say this. This is like making me tongue-tied. 
So some soldier that I don't know is going to have to live in my house. i got to feed him. i got to give him my bed. Darn it! What in the world am I going to do? This is called the Quartering Act. Later on, we will add this to the Constitution in the form of the Bill of Rights. The Third Bill of Rights say there will be no force soldiers to live in our house, no quartering act in America. This is part of the Intolerable Act. So in review real quick. So they close the port of Boston. That's number one of the Intolerable Acts. Any major crime that a British official does in the colonies, he can leave and be tried in England. That's right. You got it. And lastly, the quartering act. British soldiers will live in our houses. Oh my gosh, that's horrible. Okay, so this is what happened. The colonists called for the First Continental Congress to protest these actions and formed colonial militias. That's right. We're getting together, we're going to start forming our own little armies to begin to resist these acts. That's the Intolerable Acts. Oh my gosh, is that poo hanging over my shoulder? Uh, what am I going to do? Let, let's say poo real quick. All right, poo is safe. Let's continue. Now, much of the planning for the First Continental Congress was carried out by the Committees of Correspondence. Committees, that's groups that meet, and they're going to correspond. That means they talk to each other in like paper documents, like a letter. If you want to correspond today, you might text, you might email, you might uh, put a blog up, but you will correspond. Back then they didn't have that. All right, these committees were formed because American patriots could not communicate publicly. If you're a patriot of America, you could not communicate publicly because you might get your head cut off. Here we go. One committee would exchange written communications with another community within or between colonies. What this is going to do, this will be the first time that these 13 colonies you see right here, all right, all the way from Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, all the way, all 13 of them are going to work together for the very first time in these committees of correspondence. This is awesome. The first time our colonies begin to work together, you begin to see what it might be like to be an American, not just a Virginian, not just a Georgian, but an American. The Committees of Correspondence. Yeah. I guess you wonder why I'm wearing this sombrero. I'm wearing this in honor of our, my brothers and sisters, my Hispanic brothers and sisters. I'd like to say, it's uh, proud to be an American. And I appreciate uh, all that you've done for us. Okay, so here we go. Last thing is, this is all common sense. Common sense, that's right. In January 1776, a patriot philosopher named Thomas Paine published a pamphlet called Common Sense. It was a small little pamphlet, but it had a big effect. Time for the elephant again. Common sense had a big effect on how uh, the American colonists began to think and their support for independence from Great Britain. Colonists were persuaded by the logic of Paine's arguments, and some of them were this, like that the Atlantic Ocean was too wide to allow Britain to rule America as well as an American government could. Number two, that it is foolish to think that an island can rule a continent. And people got fired up about this. Three, three. <laughs> If Britain were America's mother country, that made Britain's actions all the worse because no mother would treat her child so badly. Thomas Paine's Common Sense.